did a report in reference to vandalism to her vehicle. Apparently she's out there now and found out the vehicle actually was shot out. The windows were shot out of the vehicle. Caller states that she found the bullet underneath her seat. It's going to be in a 2001 Ford Explorer white color. Okay, welcome to the wonderful world of RTL SDR digital trunk scanning with decoding. You see a lot of stuff up on the screen. Please do not worry about it. Uh, I'm going to include all this information in the uh, description to this video, so you'll just be able to click and go. You will have to download four pieces of software for this to make this whole thing work. Uh, and don't be intimidated by it. It's I, I promise it's as simple as going to the site, downloading the software, installing the software, and I'm going to teach you how to incorporate everything. Okay, SDR Sharp is a way of it's a really cool way of finding channels to listen to, especially trunked channels. It's really the only reason why I'm going to use it. This in of itself is a ton of fun. Uh, you'll be able to listen to all the same channels as you uh, can with your old analog scanner. Unitrunker is the piece of software that we're going to use to allow us to um, follow trunked communications. DSD Plus is actually our decoder. That's what's going to decode our digital messages for us. And then virtual cable, our virtual cable is going to help us tie these two pieces of software together. And it'll make a lot more sense when we get to it. If this seems scary to you, don't let it be. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to actually show you step by step. This is a my desktop computer, as I said previously. None of this software is on my desktop yet. All the stuff that I showed you from the very beginning video uh, was all on my laptop. Um, but now let's let's just dive right into it. This is where we're going to start. We're going to start at RTLSDR.com. And from RTLSDR.com, you can go to the Quick Start Guide. And this is a great, this is where I got my information in terms of where I learned how to get my start. This is all the information that I'm going to replicate for you in video form. For those of you that do, do not like to read or are don't have enough patience to read. Uh, but as you can see, the number one thing you need to do is you need to obtain one of these uh, RTL SDR dongles. And if you want to listen to trunked communications, you actually need to buy two of them. All right, so as I click on this, lots of stuff here. You can see that they range in prices. There's a 24, a 19. Uh, you can actually go on eBay and get them much cheaper. But I'm going to go ahead and recommend the one that I bought. The one that I bought is one of the more expensive one. It was 25 bucks. But what I liked about it is it came with this huge antenna uh, in addition to the little itty bitty antenna. And I found that with this antenna, I think it extends like f probably, I'm looking at mine right now, it extends probably a good four feet. And it's just a great way to get started. So I, I think from that standpoint, it's worth it. If you're okay with just getting the smaller one, then obviously you can go with one of those lesser expensive options as we see here on, the, on eBay. So I'll close these windows here. So the one you're looking for is the R820T2, uh, which is also compatible with the older R820. That's another reason why I decided to go with this one is because it just, it's R820T2. And I couldn't tell you what that means other than it matched the recommendation of the website. So that's what I went with. Now that we've identified the hardware that we're going to need, let's start downloading some of this software. So I'm going to get rid of a few of these windows here. And the first place I'm going to go is to a place called AirSpy. This is where we're going to get SDR Sharp. And remember, I will put the link in the description of the video. So if you go to AirSpy and then you go to download, you can see this Windows SDR software package. And that kind of is a good point right now to bring it up. This, this, a lot of this stuff is geared for Windows. Uh, you can do it on Linux. I haven't tried to do it on Linux yet, but Windows offers us a much simpler platform to learn from. So this is a good place to start. So here's the one that I'm going to be clicking on here is the SDR Sharp for Windows, which I'm going to go ahead and download. And as you can see down here, it is downloading the software. And it's done. Okay. So that's SDR Sharp. Uh, the next place that I'm going to go is go to Unitrunker. And this is what it looks like when you go to Unitrunker.com. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go here for the download. And then I'm going to select the most recent. 8515 is the most recent, it would appear. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, it's opening up another window and downloading the Unitrunker software. And it's done. So now I'm going to go to the virtual audio. Now watch how I click through this one. First thing I'm going to do is go to VB Cable. 
click here and then this orange download button I'm gonna click it and it's downloading that software and it's done and the last software that you're gonna want is this DSD plus so what you're going to want to do is once you're at dsdplus.com come over to the download page And I'm going to go ahead and get the DSD Plus, clicking on the first one, and it's done. And I'm going to click on the DLL files as well. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, ignore these two right here, FMPA. I think that's for um, that's another application for uh, airplane monitoring and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to kind of ignore that for now. Now, as you can see, I've got my DSD, uh, my DLLs, my DSD my cable, my trunker, and my SDR sharp. So I'm going to go ahead and go to show all. I'm going to go ahead and do, go show in folder. So all this stuff is in my downloads folder now. Now as you can see I've created a, a folder already on my desktop for all my radio stuff. If you don't know how to create a folder on your desktop just put your cursor somewhere in the desktop, do a right click, and new folder, and there it is, and you can go ahead and name it and add your stuff to that. But I'm going to go ahead and open up radio. I'm going to go ahead and grab these from uh, downloads and I'm going to dump them in here. Okay, so where to start? Keeping it simple, I want to go ahead and start with SDR Sharp. So I'm going to actually mouse over SDR Sharp and I'm going to right click and say extract all. And it's going to ask me where I want to extract it. It's defaulting to my desktop radio folder and it's going to put it in an SDR Sharp folder. And yeah, it sounds good to me, so go ahead and extract. And it's showing me all the files and stuff like that that it put in that folder. Something that I do out of personal preference is you see all these zipped fold these zipped files. Well, once I unzip them, I'm not going to need the zip files anymore, but I don't necessarily want to delete them. So I'm going to create a um a folder for my zipped. This just kind of helps keep me less confused. And I'm gonna take the SDR sharp and I'm gonna put it in a zipped. All right, so now I'm going to go into my SDR Sharp folder, and I'm going to look for this Windows Batch file that says install RTL SDR. Double click on it. And it's actually downloading the driver. It looked like it, download, it downloaded the driver for me, and it put this thing called Zadig on my computer. Okay, so assuming that you have your RTL SDR dongle at this time, it's time to plug it in. You can see down here, installing device driver software, click for status. I can click for status if I want to. It didn't really do me any good. Okay, I sped up the video a little bit uh, because I don't want you to have to sit there and wait. That was about two minutes, uh, but it says your device is ready to use. I'm going to go ahead and hit close. So I'm going to come over to this file here called Zadig, and I'm not going to double click it to open it. I'm actually going to right click it and say run as administrator. And it's going to ask me if I'm sure. I say yes, and we're going to get a little pop-up box. Now, if you click here, you're going to see nothing. But if you go to options and you click it, you can say list all devices. And there's a whole bunch of stuff there. Now, you do not want to select the USB ones. You want to select the bulk in interface. Now I have two of them, so I'm going to start with this zero. And I'm going to click it. And what we have to do is, this is the driver that's set right now, but we want this Win USB driver. That's the one we need. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the driver. And I clicked it. And we're going to install it. And we're successful. So when we click back, we're going to see win and win. Win and win. We are done with Zadag. We do not ever have to open up Zadag again. And you're drinking Drew drugs. Currently outside with the family being I. 10 4 10 17. 